Oke, okay. magandang kali po sa inyong lahat. Magandang kali po. Okay, before we start, let's uh, pray together. Tayo pong lahat ay manalangin. Dear most friend, gracious father, mahal at mapagpala namin Ama. Thank you for saving us from sin and eternal destruction. Maraming salamat po na iniligtas nyo kami mula sa kasalanan at mula sa walang hanggang pagkawasa. Thank you for calling us when we are young. Maraming salamat po na tinawag nyo po kami habang kami po ay nasa kabataan. We uh, really desire to glorify our Lord in uh, our youth time. At nais po talaga namin na maluwalhati ang aming Panginoon sa panahon ng aming kabataan. But this time, according to the will of God, we are in oppression because of the COVID-19. Ngunit sa oras na ito, kami po ay nasa kapigatian at insunod po sa kalooban ng Diyos dahil po sa COVID-19. But we believe our Lord is always with us and help us even though we are in oppression. Ngunit kami po ay sumasampalataya na ang Panginoon ay kasama namin at tumutulog sa amin sa kabila ng aming kapigatian. Let us overcome this oppression by relying on the Lord. Kaya tulungan niyo po kami na mapagtagumpayan ang mga kapigang, kapigatian ito sa pamagitan ng pagtitiwala sa Panginoon. Let us have the more power uh, and the wisdom uh, so that we can overcome this oppression. Kaya no, tulungan niyo po kami na magkaroon ng kalakasan at karunungan upang mapag, mapagtagumpayan ang kapigatian ito. Especially today, uh, we will think about the marriage of a Christian. Lalong-lalo na po sa araw na ito, pag-iisipan po namin yung pag-aasawa ng isang Kristiyano. This time, please, work the Holy Spirit so that we can clearly understand the meaning of the marriage of a Christian. Kaya nawa, sa oras na ito, Manila Spirit ang kumilos upang maunawaan po namin ng malinaw kung ano po ang pag-aasawa ng isang Kristiyano. From start to the end, we only rely on your mercy and gracious. Kaya magmula sa simula hanggang sa matapos, sa inyong habag at biyaya lamang po kami umaasa. We pray in Jesus' name. Dalangin namin ito sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay, let's open to the Bible. Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 4. Buksan po natin sa ating mga Biblia sa Ecclesiastes po, kapitulo 4. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 9 Ecclesiastes kapitulo 4 versikulo 9 <coughs> verse 9 to 12 mula versikulo 9 hanggang 12 po 9 to 12 okay. uh, pasahin po natin ng sabay-sabay 3 2 ang dalawa ay mas mabuti kaysa isa sapagkat sila ay may mabuting gantimpala sa kanilang pagpapagod. Sapagkat kung sila ay bumagsak, ibabango ng isa ang kanyang kasama, ngunit kahabag-abag siya na nag-iisa kapag siya ay bumagsak, at walang iba na magbabangon sa kanya. Muli, kung ang dalawa ay mahigang magkasama, may init nga sila, ngunit paano may iinitan ang nag-iisa? Bagaman ang isang tao ay maaring magtagumpay laban sa iba, ang dalawa ay magtatagumpay laban sa isa. Ang panaling may tatlong PC ay hindi agad na kapatid. Uh, especially uh, <clears throat> when we think about the marriage of the Christian, yeah, this uh, verse uh, can explain exactly about the marriage of a Christian. Kaya kung pag-iisipan po natin yung pag-aasawa ng isang Kristiyano, yung mga talata pong ito, yung nagpapaliwanag ng mabuti patungkol sa pag-aasawa ng isang Kristiyano. <clears throat> verse 9 says, To are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. Kaya sinabi sa versikulo 9, ang dalawa ay mas mabuti kaysa isa sapagkat sila ay may mabuting gantimpala sa kanilang pagpapagod. Yeah. To are better than one. Kaya ang dalawa ay mas mabuti kaysa isa. Uh, most of you uh, member, you are single, right? Kaya karamihan ng ating mga miyembro sa youth ay single. Yeah. But when you get married, you uh, can become two. Right? Ngunit kapag nag-asawa na po kayo, magiging dalawa na kayo. The Bible says, two are better than one. Kaya sinasabi ng Biblia, ang dalawa ay mas mabuti kaysa isa. Because they have a good reward for their labor. Sapagkat sila ay may mabuting gantimpala sa kanilang pagpapagod. Uh, by marriage, uh, we can become two and we can accomplish uh, works of God. Kaya sa pamagitan po ng pag-aasawa, tayo ay nagiging dalawa at 
na isasagawa natin yung kalooban ng Diyos. It's the uh, purpose of the marriage of the Christian. Kaya ito po yung layunin ng pag-aasawa ng isang Kristiyano. It's a completely from the marriage in the world. Ibang-iba po ito kumpara doon sa pag-aasawa sa mundong ito. And verse 10, for if they fall, one will lift up his companion. At sa verse 10, sapagkat kung sila'y bumagsak, ibabangon ng isa ang kanyang kasama. Uh, Sometimes we, uh, we can be weary in our Christian life. Kung minsan po tayo ay nandulumo sa ating buhay kristyano. But yeah, if uh, uh, we get married, uh, our partner, husband or wife, uh, can lift up. Ngunit kapag nagkaasawa na po tayo, yung ating kapareha, yung ating asawang lalaki o asawang babae, siya yung magbabangon sa atin. Yeah, so, husband and wife can help each other. Kaya yung mag-asawa, maaari silang magtulungan sa isa't isa. Uh, they can be more strong in the faith. Kaya yun po yung dahilan kung bakit sila yung nagiging mas malakas sa pananampalataya. That's why two are better than one. Kaya nga, ang dalawa ay mas mabuti kaysa isa. Marriage uh, is uh, very important. In our Christian life. Kaya ang pag-aasawa po ay napaka-importante sa ating buhay kristyano. Uh, churchy, churchy can start uh, by uh, family. Kaya ang iglesia po ay maaaring magsimula sa pamagitan ng pamilya. Uh, so, uh, as you know, uh, from Adam and Eve, Yeah, from Adam and Eve, yeah, the one family yeah, could start. Kaya gaya lang nalaman natin, mula kay Adan at kay Eva, yung isang pamilya ay nagsimula. They are the image of a church. Sila po yung larawan ng iglesia. <coughs> yeah. So, uh, when there are many uh, the sincere family in church, church can be strong. Kaya kapag marami po yung mga tapat o senserong pamilya sa isang iglesia, yung iglesia ng iyon ay malakas. So, uh, yeah, I hope uh, our church also uh, can have uh, uh, many, many marriage and making sincere family. Kaya umaasa ko na sa ating iglesia ay maraming uh, magiging mag-asawa at magkakaroon ng sincerong pamilya. Then the family uh, can be uh, used by God preciously. At yung pamilya po na iyon ay gagamitin ng mahalaga ng Diyos. Then our church uh, can be strong. At yung ating iglesia ay magiging malakas po. Okay. So, uh, anyway, we, we have to know uh, the marriage is a very important thing in our Christian life. Kaya dapat nating malaman na yung pag-aasawa ay napakahalagang bagay sa ating buhay, Kristiyano. Uh, before we Think about the marriage. Uh, let's uh, first at uh, first think about uh, what's the pre-marital uh, fellowship of a Christian. Kaya bago natin pag-isipan yung pag-aasawa, pag-isipan muna po natin yung pre-marital fellowship sa isang Kristiano. Uh, in church, in church, uh, it's not allowed. Yeah, we have a boyfriend or a girlfriend. Kaya sa church, hindi po ipinapahintulot na magkaroon ng boyfriend at girlfriend. We can have a free marital fellowship under the condition of a marriage. Tayo po ay maaaring magkaroon ng free marital fellowship uh, sa ilalim po ng pag-aasawa. So, we shouldn't have a uh, boyfriend or girlfriend to fulfill our fresh desire like uh, worldly people. Kaya tayo, dapat hindi tayo magkaroon ng boyfriend o girlfriend para tuparin lang yung pagdanasa ng ating laman gaya ng mga taong makamundo. Church is not the place we try to make a boyfriend or girlfriend. Kaya yung iglesia, hindi ito yung lugar kung saan tayo dapat maghanap ng boyfriend o girlfriend. If we come to church to make a boyfriend or a girlfriend, we cannot focus on our Christian life. Kung tayo po ay pumupunta sa church para magkaroon lang ng boyfriend o girlfriend, hindi tayo makakapagtuon sa ating boy kristyano. Our church will lose uh, the holiness, the pureness. Kaya yung ating iglesia, mawawala yung kabanalan at yung pagiging dalisa. We cannot have a pure fellowship. Hindi tayo magkakaroon ng dalisa na pakikisama. Satan would work. At si Satanas ay kikilos. So the pre-marital fellowship is allowed under the condition for the marriage. Kaya yung pre-marital fellowship ay pinapahintulot sa ilalim ng pag-aasawa. But we can uh, have some question. 
Ngunit mare tayo magkaroon ng ilang tanong. Uh, is it seen if we have uh, uh, some desire for uh, other gender? Kaya kasalanan, gender? kasalanan ba na magkaroon ng nararamdaman sa kabil sa ibang kasarian? Of course, uh, desiring of project gender is a natural thing. It's a natural. Siyempre po yung pagkaroon ng yung pagkakaroon ng pagdanais sa ka, sa ibang kasarian, yun po ay natural na bagay. But the important thing we shouldn't show reveal our feeling to the other. Pero ang mahalagang bagay dito, dapat hindi natin ipinapakita yung ating nararamdaman sa kabi, sa iba. Uh, it's all like this. We cannot avoid uh, the bird uh, can fly on our head. Ito po ay gaya nito. Hindi natin pwedeng uh, hindi uh, pahintulot, uh, hindi natin pwedeng pigilan yung ibon sa paglipad sa ulo na natin. But we can avoid right the bird uh, make the nest on our head. Pero maaari natin pigilan kapag yung ibon na yun ay gumagawa na ng pugad sa ating ulo. Even though we have uh, some feeling to other the uh, project gender, yeah, we shouldn't um, <coughs> show our feeling to other. Kaya kaya tayo po ay merong nararamdaman sa kabilang uh, kasarian, pero dapat hindi natin ipinapakita yung ating nararamdaman. God uh, gives us the feeling of uh, uh, intimacy for other gender, not for enjoying the momentary flesh desire, but for the making a holy family with a life partner and serve the Lord better. Kaya tayo ay binigyan ng Diyos ng pagkakaroon ng malapit na fellowship sa bawat isa, hindi para i-enjoy yung makalaman na pagdanasa, kundi para magkaroon ng banal na pamilya para sa gawain o kalwalatian ng Diyos. So, uh, yeah, but you do better have the mind. Uh, yeah, you you are single, right? Uh, you you try to enjoy this uh, uh, period, this time, uh, as a singer. Kaya dapat kayo magkaroon ng kaisipan bilang isang singer. Dapat i-enjoy nyo yung pagpanahong ito bilang isang singer. How can you enjoy a singer? Kaya paano nyo may enjoy yung inyong panahon bilang isang singer? Uh, we can have a, a good or healthy fellowship with the other brothers and sisters in church. Kaya maaari tayong magkaroon ng mabuti at ma malusog na fellowship sa mga brothers and sisters na nasa iglesia. If you uh, can marry someday, uh, maybe you can have a lot of uh, concern. Balang araw, kapag kayo po ay nakapag-asawa na, maaari magkaroon kayo ng maraming alalahanin. Uh, if, if you... Uh, uh, yeah, if you are single this time, yeah, you can have a more free time. Kaya kung kayo po ay single sa panahon natin ngayon, mas marami po kayong libre oras. Okay. Yeah, so, um, anyway, uh, uh, enjoy this uh, period of a singleness. Uh, as a gift from God. Kaya i-enjoy niyo po yung pagiging single bilang isang kaloob mula sa Diyos. So, uh, we need to do uh, self-control in this time. Kaya kailangan nating magpigil sa ating mga sarili sa panahong ito. Uh, your time is the time you uh, can prepare for the future. Sapagkat yung panahon ninyo, yan yung panahon kung saan maaari kayong maganda para sa hinaharap. Uh, your time is the time uh, is uh, waiting for the future. Yung panahon ninyo, yun yung panahon kung saan kayo ay naghahantay para sa hinaharap. So the Christian who can prepare future and wait for the future uh, will have a real blessed marriage someday. Kaya yung Christiano na naghahanda para sa hinaharap at naghihintay para sa hinaharap, siya yung Christiano na magkakaroon ng pinagpalang uh, pag-aasawa. So this time, try your best to live good Beautiful Christian life. Kaya sa panahong ito, gawin po natin yung ating makakaya na makapamuhay ng maayos at mabuting buhay Kristiyano. You have to do uh, self-control. Kailangan po natin isagawa yung pagpipigil sa sarili. Okay. Uh, and also, uh, the important thing, uh, marriage of the Christian, 
we shouldn't get married with the unbeliever. At yung mahalagang bagay sa pag-aasawa ng isang Kristiyano, dapat hindi tayo mag-asawa ng hindi mananampalataya. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Unang uh, ikalawang Corinto po, chapter 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Ikalawang Corinto, kapitulo 6 po, verse 14. Versikulo 14. 14. Okay, basahin po natin ng sabay-sabay, 3, 2, 1. Huwag kayong makipamatok sa mga hindi mananampalataya sapagkat anong pagsasama mayroon ng katwiran at kasamaan o anong pagsasama mayroon ng liwanag sa kaniliman. 2 Corinthians 6, 14. Do not be on in Korea together with the unbelievers. Kaya sinabi, huwag kayong makipamatok sa mga hindi mananampalataya. Getting married with the unbeliever is the greatest yoking uh, together with the unbeliever. Kaya yung pag-aasawa ng hindi mananampalataya, yun po ay isang malaking pakikipamatok sa hindi mananampalataya. It can be grace sin before God. At ito po ay isang malaking kasalanan sa harapan ng Diyos. Uh, Nehemiah chapter 13. Sa Nehemiah kapitulo 13. Nehemiah chapter 13. Nehemiah kapitulo 13 po. Verse 27. Verse 27. Verse 27. Verse so, okay, basahin po natin ng sabay-sabay, 3, 2, 1. Makikinig ba kami sa inyo at gagawin ang lahat ng ganitong malaking kasamaan at, magtaks- at magtataksi laban sa ating Diyos sa pamagitan ng pag-aasawa sa mga babaeng banyaga? Uh, at the time of uh, Nehemiah, some Israelite can marry with the uh, Uh, Kaya nang panahon ni Nehemias, yung mga Israelita ay nag-asawa ng mga hintil o banyagang babae. Then, uh, she said, all this great evil, yeah. transgressing against our God by marrying pagan woman. Kaya sinabi niya po, ang lahat ng ganitong malaking kasamaan at magtaksi laban sa Diyos ay pag-aasawa sa mga babaeng banyaga. Yeah. Then, Mary with a believer can be graced in before God. Kaya yung pag-aasawa sa hindi mananampalataya, ito ay ma- malaking kasalanan sa harapan ng Diyos. Yeah. If a Christian can marry with a believer, yeah. how can the Christian expect the blessing of God? Kaya kung yung isang Kristiyano ay mag-aasawa ng hindi mananampalataya, paano niya aasahan yung biyaya o pagpapala mula sa Diyos? Yeah. It's impossible. Right? Impossible ho yun, di ba? Already start the marriage by disobey Sapagkat sinimulan niya yung pagsuway sa Diyos sa pamamagitan ng pag-aasawa ng hindi mananampalataya. Some people say that I can evangelize after I get married. Sabi ng ibang tao, kaya ko naman yung i-evangelize pagkatapos kong asawahin. But it's impossible. Impossible ho yun. You are not right? Hindi ka ho Diyos, di ba? You cannot evangelize. Hindi mo siya ma-evangelize. Uh... Of course, the, the hope of the Christian and the hope of the unbeliever are completely different. Siyempre po, yung pag-asa ng Kristiyano at yung pag-asa ng hindi mananampalataya ay magkaiba. They cannot be united. Hindi sila po pwedeng maging isa. They cannot be happy. At hindi sila magiging masaya. They will be every time fighting. At palagi magkakaroon ng pag-aaway. Since I got a salvation, I saw many times some with the Christian, yeah. they can marry me the unbeliever. Mula nang ako po ay maligtas, maraming beses ko po na nanakita yung mga kabataang Kristiyano ay nag-aasawa ng hindi mananampalataya. Although they know what will happen, they follow their flesh desire. Kahit na alam na nila kung ano yung mangyayari, pero sinusunod pa rin nila yung pagnanasa ng kanilang laman. It's very clear what will happen in the end. Pero ang linaw-linaw po kung ano yung mangyayari sa kahulihan. Their Christian life completely was destroyed. Yung kanilang buhay kresyano ay lubos ang mawawasa. Yeah, so, uh, we, we have to keep in mind, we, we shouldn't get married with unbeliever. Kaya dapat natin, situation we are. Kaya dapat po natin tandaan na hindi tayo dapat mag-asawa ng hindi mananampalataya anumang sitwasyon yung mangyari. <coughs> But there, are, uh, there is uh, some case. Uh, some Christian uh, have already uh, boyfriend or girlfriend before they got saved. Pero may ilang kaso po na may ilang Christiano na mayroong boyfriend or girlfriend bago sila malikas. Then maybe you can uh, 
that person who can try to evangelize. Sa una, mari nyo subukang evangelize. Uh, but if for you <coughs> fail in, in the evangelism, you need to separate from uh, unbeliever. Ngunit kung kayo po ay nabigo sa evangelism, kailangan nyo pong hiwalayan yung hindi mananampalataya. Uh, they don't have an interest in the gospel. Uh, you need to be separate. Kung wala talaga silang interest sa ebanghelyo, kailangan nyo hiwalayan. But uh, most of the Christians have a difficulty in the separation. Pero karamihan po ng mga Kristiyano ay nahihirapan pagdating sa paghihiwalay. They think if I separate, they will be hurt. Iniisip nila kapag hiniwalayan ko siya, baka masaktan siya. But if you please a man, how can you please a God? Ngunit kung bibigyan lugod mo yung tao, paano mo mabibigyan lugod yung Diyos? You have to please a God first. Kailangan mo munang bigyan lugod yung Diyos. Yun yung una. When you please a God, if there is a will of a God, God will give another chance to them. To be saved. Kung bibigyan lugod mo muna yung Diyos, kapag naroon yung kalooban ng Diyos, bibigyan sila ulit ng Diyos ng pagkakataon na maligtas. So, uh, at first, you can try to evangelize. Kaya sa una, subukan mo muna i-evangelize. And then, if uh, they accept the gospel, they are saved. Uh, in the case, uh, so you need to be careful. At kung sila po ay maligtas at tanggapin yung ibanghelyo, kailangan mo po sila uh, <coughs> Uh, if uh, yeah, uh, you you shouldn't have the mind. You shouldn't have the mind. They are still your boyfriend or girlfriend. Kaya dapat hindi ka mag dapat ka maging maingat. Pero dapat hindi ka magkaroon ng kaisipan na uh, boyfriend mo parin sila o girlfriend mo parin sila. Uh, yeah, you do better consider they are just one brother or sister among other. Brothers and sister in church. Kaya dapat mo pong isi-isipin na sila isang brother o isang sister sa iglesia. And also you need to check whether uh, their salvation is true or not by watching uh, their Christian life around the uh, one year. At kailangan mo rin pong suriin yung kanilang kaligtasan kung sila ba ay ligtas o hindi sa loob ng isang taon. Because there are some uh, people who deceive their salvation. Sapagkat mayroon pong ilang tao na dinadaya yung kanilang kaligtasan. They act like uh, they are already saved. Kung kumilos, parang ligtas. But their purpose uh, is uh, uh, to get married. Pero yung layunin, nila, yung layunin talaga nila para maging makapag-asawa lang. That's why even though they say that, they are already saved, we need to uh, watch their Christian life. Kaya kahit sinasabi nila na ligtas na raw sila, kailangan pa rin nating bantayan yung kanilang buhay. Kaya after sa then, when they, uh, after then, if there is the will of God, uh, uh, maybe they can have a, uh, another chance. They can meet uh, under the condition of the marriage. At kung naroon po talaga yung kalooban ng Diyos, mari silang uh, uh, mag-asawa, alinsunod ali po doon sa uh, pag-aasawa. But anyway, please keep in mind, yeah. we shouldn't get married with unbeliever. Pero dapat po nating tandaan na dapat hindi tayo mag-asawa ng hindi mananampalataya. Okay. Uh, now, let's uh, think about uh, how, if so, how can we get married in church? Kaya ngayon, pag-iisipan po natin kung paano tayo maikakasal sa iglesia. At first, we need to have uh, the faith God joins man and woman. Kaya una, dapat magkaroon tayo ng pananampalataya na ang Diyos ang naglalapit sa babae at lalaki. Uh, Matthew chapter 19 Sa Mateo ho, kapitulo 19 Matthew chapter 19 Mateo kapitulo 19 Verse 5 5 and 6 Mula versikulo 5 po hanggang 6. Matthew chapter 19, verse 5 and 6. Okay, pasahin po natin ng samay-samay, 3 to 1. At kanyang sinabi, dahil dito, iiwan ng lalaki ang kanyang ama at ang ina at makikisama sa kanyang asawa. Ang dalawa ay magiging isang laman, kaya hindi na sila dalawa kundi isang laman. Ang pinagsama nga ng Diyos ay huwag papaghiwalayin ng tao. 
what God has joined together, let non men separate. Ang pinagsama nga ng Diyos ay huwag pag, papaghiwalayin ng tao. God joined together mean God uh, allow the marriage. Kaya ang Diyos ang nagsama sa kanilang dalawa, ibig sabihin, ipinahintulot ng Diyos na sila ay maging mag-asawa. If God does not allow, yeah, nobody can come to a marriage. Kung hindi po ipapahintulot ng Diyos, walang sino man po ang maaaring maging mag-asawa. We, we, we need to have the pay God. We are uh, bring our partner to us. Kaya kailangan natin magkaroon ng pananampalataya na ang Diyos yung magbibigay ng ating kapareha. <coughs> Proverbs chapter 19. Kawikaan po, Kapitulo 19. Proverbs chapter 19. Verse 14. Kawikaan, Kapitulo 19. Versikulo 14 po. Proverbs chapter 19. Verse 14. Okay, basahin po natin ng sabay-sabay, 3 to 1. Bahay at kayamanan ay minamanan sa mga magula, ngunit galing sa Panginoon ang asawang may katalinuhan. Uh, house and riches are in, on inheritance from fathers, uh, but a prudent wife is from the Lord. Kaya bahay at kayamanan ay minamanan sa mga magula, ngunit galing sa Panginoon ang asawang may katalinuhan. It will be same, right? Prudent uh, husband is from the Lord. Pareho din po ito kung sasabihin natin, yung matalinong asawang lalaki, galing sa Panginoon. God knows uh, me very well. Alam na, kilala kilala ng Diyos, ako. That's why God will uh, arrange my partner uh, who is uh, suitable, proper in me. Kaya nga, dadali ng Diyos yung kapareha na karapat dapat at naaangkop para sa akin. So, we, we need to have the faith God join together. Kaya dapat magkaroon tayo ng pananampalataya na ang Diyos yung nagsasama. So, uh, if we have this faith, yeah, we, we don't need to worry about too much the marriage, right? Kaya kung tayo po ay merong ganitong pananampalataya, hindi tayo labis na mag-aalala pagdating sa pag-aasawa. God will arrange your marriage. Sapagat yung Diyos yung mag-aayos ng iyong pag-aasawa. Okay? But in our side, uh, we needed to pray for marriage. Ngunit sa panig natin, kailangan natin idalangin yung pag-aasawa. Uh, as we learn, the marriage is the very important in our Christian life. Gaya na napag-aralan natin, napakahalagang bagay na pag-aasawa sa ating buhay kristyano. That's why we need to pray for the marriage. Kaya yun ang dahilan kung bakit kailangan natin ipanalangin yung pag-aasawa. Uh, but don't try to pray uh, by asking uh, specific brother or sister. Pero huwag niyo pong subukan na idalangin na hinihingi niyo yung, yung specific na brother o sister. For example, brother or brother pray. Halimbawa, ganito yung panalangin ng isang brother. Oh, Lord, I want to get married with uh, one sister. O oh, Panginoon, feeling to her. O oh, Panginoon, gusto ko talagang maikasal sa sister na ito. Meron talaga akong nararamdaman para sa kanya. Please help me to get with her. Kaya tulungan mo nga ako na maikasal sa kanya. It's a not desirable prayer. Hindi po ka nais-nais yung ganong panalangin. Uh, as we learn, God join together. Right? Kaya na napag-aralan natin, yung Diyos yung nagsasama. God will bring the most proper, the suitable your partner for you. Kaya nang, sapagkat yung Diyos yung magdadala ng naangkop at karapat dapat na kapareha para sa iyo. So, yeah, there is the word. Uh, when you go to the word, you need to pray once. Meron pong kasabihan, kapag pumunta ka sa digmaan o sa gera, manalangin ka ng isang beses. When you go to the sea by the ship, you need to pray twice. Kapag pumunta ka sa dagat, gamit yung barko, kailangan mong manalangin ng dalawang beses. But when you get, uh, when you get married, you need to pray uh, three times. Ngunit kapag nag-asawa ka na, kailangan mong manalangin ng tatlong beses. It means, uh, it's very important. Ibig sabihin po nito, napakahalaga po talaga nito. Okay, so at first, uh, we need the um, sincere prayer for the marriage. Kaya una, kailangan po natin ng tapat na panalangin para po sa pag-aasawa. We can pray, O oh Lord, please uh, allow the sister or the brother who is uh, proper in me. 
Kaya o Panginoon nawa ipagkaloob mo sa akin yung brother o yung isang sister na naaangkop para sa akin. Okay? Uh, and then, uh, we need to prepare the marriage. At kailangan din po natin ihanda o maghanda para sa pagpapakasal. Uh, we need to prepare uh, especially three kind of things. Kailangan po natin ihanda yung tatlong mahalagang bagay. First, uh, preparation of a faith. Una, yung paghahanda sa pananampalataya. At first, we need to be uh, mature in the faith. Una, kailangan natin maging mature sa pananampalataya. So, uh, it's not good uh, you want to get married as soon as you are saved. Hindi po mabuti na gusto mo ka agad mag-asawa, kaniligtas mo pala na. First, you need to grow the faith. Sa pagkatuna, kailangan mo munang lumago sa pananampalataya. So, I recommend uh, the minimum, minimum one year since you got saved. Kaya, kaya inirecommend ako po yung minimum isang taon. You need to grow in the faith for one year. Kailangan mo lumago sa pananampalataya sa loob ng isang taon. So, uh, first, we need to prepare in the faith. Kaya una, kailangan natin maghanda sa pananampalataya. Uh, second, uh, we need to prepare uh, mentally. At pangalawa, kailangan natin maganda mentally. If you are too young mentally, it's not good. Kung, kung bata ka pa ho, mentally, hindi po yun maganda. Yeah. To mature mentally, uh, you do better uh, experience, experience outside the walk with the other people. Kaya para ka maging matured mentally, kailangan mong maranasan yung paggawa o pagkatrabaho sa labas kasama ng ibang tao. That's why the, for example, the student, student is not proper for the marriage. Kaya halimbawa po, yung mga estudyante, time, hindi pa sila karapat dapat na mag-asawa. Uh, at first, you need to finish your school, your study. Una, kailangan mo munang tapusin yung pag-aaral mo. And after then, you need to experience work in outside. At pagkatapos doon, kailangan mong maranasan na magtrabaho sa labas. And you can be mature in mentally. Upang ikaw ay maging mature mentally. Uh, and then, third, you need to prepare financially. At ikatlo, kailangan mong maghanda financially. Uh, you need to be independent. You need to be independent from your parents. Kinakailangan mong maging independent mula sa iyong magulang. Proverbs chapter 24 Sa Kawikaan po, Kapitulo 24 24 Verse 27 Kawikaan Kapitulo 24 Versikulo 27 po Chapter 24 Verse 27 Okay, basahin po natin ng sabay-sabay Ihanda mo sa labas ang iyong gawa at ihanda mo para sa sarili mo sa parang at pagkatapos ay gawin mo ang iyong bahay. Prepare your <coughs> outside work. Sabi po, ihanda mo sa labas ang iyong gawa. Uh, it means, uh, especially the brother, brother needed to have a work or a job. Lalong-lalo na po yung brother, dapat ke- meron siyang trabaho. Then you can be in, uh, independent from your parents. Nang sa gayon, maging independent ka mula sa magulang mo. After uh, you can marry, you need to sustain your family. Pagkatapos mo pong mag-asawa, kailangan mo, kailangan mo pong buhayin yung pamilya mo. So, uh, it's not good you try to get married without any work or job. Kaya hindi po maganda na mag-asawa ka ng walang trabaho o walang hanap buhay. <clears throat> Some people say that, oh, no problem. We will love it together. Even... We don't have a money, no problem. Sabi ng iba, walang problema naman po. Mahal naman namin yung isa't isa, kaya walang problema kahit walang pera. Yeah. Marriage is not the theory. It's a real, real, real life, right? Yung pag-aasawa po, hindi yung teorya, kundi tunay na buhay po yun. So, if you get married without any preparation, you will need many problems. Kung ikaw po ay mag-aasawa na walang anumang paghanda, magkakaroon ka talaga ng maraming problema. Yeah, so you did also pack your Christian life. At syempre, makaka-apekto rin yun sa buhay kristyano mo. So, <clears throat> faith and mentally and financially, uh, 
you need to prepare first. Kaya sa pananampalataya, mentally at financially, kailangan mo munang maghanda sa mga bagay na ito. Okay? Uh, so, maybe you know your uh, time, your situation, whether you, you are the time to get married or not. Maring alam mo po yung iyong panahon o yung iyong kalagayan kung po pwede ka na bang mag-asawa o hindi pa. Uh, if you think you are already prepared uh, all this thing, then uh, yeah, you can uh, try to uh, get married. Kaya kung naihanda mo na po yung lahat ng mga bagay na ito, kung ganun, uh, kailangan mo na mag-asawa. Uh, but here, uh, we need to be careful. Pero pagdating dito, dapat pa rin tayo maging maingat. The marriage of the Christian in church is different from the marriage in the world. Sapagkat yung pag-aasawa ng isang Kristiyano sa loob ng iglesia ay iba sa pag-aasawa ng mga tao sa mundo. How, how to get married in this world? Paano ba mag-asawa sa mundo? If you have somebody who you have a feeling or you like, you uh, propose right then. Kaya kung meron ka sa puso mo na natitipuhan, gusto mo siya, gusto, kailangan mo mag-propose. This is the way of marriage in the world. Ganun yung paraan ng uh, pag-aasawa sa mundo. Yeah, but in church, it's a different. Pero sa iglesia, iba po. Uh, if you already reached it, uh, the time, you can get married. Uh, and if you have uh, uh, some brethren, you have some feeling, uh, then you can uh, turn to the pastor. Kaya kung naabot mo na po yung panahon para mag-asawa at kung meron kang kapatid na nasa iyong puso na gusto mong mapangasawa, kung ganun po, kailangan mo sabihin yun sa pastor. Yeah. Then, uh, as a pastor, I can arrange the meeting first. At bilang isang pastor, maaari kong i-arrange yung pagkikita ninyo. But if, as a, we learn already, even though you have some feeling to the other, you shouldn't uh, reveal, show your feeling to the other personally. Pero gaya na napag-aralan natin na kahit meron tayong nararamdaman sa iba, hindi dapat natin ipinapakita yung ating nararamdaman sa iba. You need to uh, meet together uh, under the guidance or range of the pastor. Kaya kinakailangan yung magkita ng magkasama alin sunod po doon sa patnubay ni pastor. Uh, the pastor uh, can be the uh, you know the match, matchmaker matchmaker for the marriage. Kung baga si pastor yung parang matchmaker ng pag-aasawa. Yeah, because it's the the most safe way uh, when we get married. Sapagat yun po yung pinakaligtas na paraan sa pag-aasawa. But if you personally show your feeling to the other, there will be many problems. Ngunit kung personal mong ipapakita yung nararamdaman mo sa iba, magkakaroon po talaga ng maraming problema. Uh, yeah. In that case, if you show your feeling to the other personally, maybe the other side can be stumbled. Kaya kung ipapakita mo po yung iyong nararamdaman sa iba, maaari niyo yung kabilang panig ay matisod. Yeah. So, we have to avoid yeah. you show your feeling personally. Kaya kailangan mong iwasan na ipakita yung uh, nararamdaman mo sa iba. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway, if you uh, show your feeling to the pastor, pastor will arrange the meeting. Ngayon pa man, kung isasabihin mo po yung iyong nararamdaman kay pastor, siya yung mag-aayos ng inyong pagkikita. Then, pastor will ask to uh, the other side whether uh, she or he uh, want, want to meet or not. At tatanungin ni pastor yung kabilang pani kung gusto niya bang makipagkita o hindi. If the other side also uh, has the mind to meet, then uh, yeah, the pastor can arrange it to meet together. At kung yung kabilang panig po ay gusto rin makipagkita, kaya si pastor po yung mag-aayos ng kanilang pagkikita. In that case, yeah, you can have a, some meeting uh, with the, the other side. Kaya sa ganung kaso po, maaari kayong magkita, magkita. Uh, maybe the, there will be two kind of a case. Kaya dito po, merong dalawang uri ng kaso. You can meet. Uh, brother or sister in uh, same church. 
Kaya dito po maaari mo pong uh, maaari kayong makita ng uh, brother or sister ng parehong church. In that case, you, uh, maybe you already know the other side of the well. Kaya sa, kapag ganun po yung kaso, kilalang kilala mo na maaari yung kabila. In that case, uh, maybe you don't need uh, much time to know more. Kapag ganito po yung kaso, hindi nyo na po kailangan ng maraming oras na magkilalanan pa. Maybe after several meetings, you... you Maybe you can decide whether you can you will get married or not. Sa pagkat pagkatapos po ng ilang pagkikita, mare na po kayo magdecision kung magas kung magasawa ba kayo o hindi. Uh, but uh, sometimes you can meet uh, the brethren uh, in other church. Muni kung minsan maari mo rin pong uh, mamit yung ibang kapatiran na nasa ibang church. In that case, maybe you need to. Uh, have a more time to know each other. Kaya kapag ganun po yung kaso, maaari kailangan nyo po ng maraming oras para kilalanin yung isa't isa. So anyway, you can uh, have the chance to meet each other. Ganun pa man, ma- maaari kayong magkaroon ng pagkakataon na magkita sa isa't isa. Uh, after you have a meeting, uh, it's better you uh, give the feedback to the pastor. <clears throat> Kaya pagkatapos nyo pong magkita, maganda po kung magbibigay kayo ng feedback. Uh, hey pastor, you can have a pity about whether you continue the meeting or not. Kaya maaganda po kung magbibigay kayo ng ulat kung ipagpapatuloy niyo pa ba yung pagkikita o hindi na. But uh, don't have the mind. You uh, sometimes you you meet, but you are you are disappointed. You don't have a mind to meet again. Kaya kung minsan magugusa na kayo magkaroon ng ganitong kaisipan na kapag nakita na kayo minsan na didismaya kayo kaya ayaw niyo na siyang kitain ulit. But it's not sapagat hindi po yun maganda. You can try to meet several times. Kailangan nyo pong uh, magkita ng ilang uli. Because you, you cannot know uh, exactly by meeting just the once. Sapagat hindi nyo po makikilala yung isa't isa na eksakto sa pagkikita ng isang beses lamang. Uh, and then when you have the meeting, you can know Their, the other side, their paid and their uh, view, uh, view over line. Hmm? Kaya kapag nagkaroon po kayo ng pagkikita, ma- malalaman mo yung pananampalatayan ng tao ngayon at malalaman mo yung pananaw niya sa buhay. And what's the, their vision in their Christian life? At kung ano ba yung kanyang vision para sa kanyang buhay kristyano? Yeah. Then maybe God will give the mind uh, whether you can marry or not. At yung Diyos ay magbibigay ng kaisipan kung mag, uh, magpapakasal kayo o hindi. Uh, yeah. But uh, when you have the meeting, when you have the meeting by being arranged by the pastor, uh, yeah. you shouldn't uh, You shouldn't say to the other, you have the meeting. Ngunit kapag kayo po ay nagkaroon ng pagkikita na ipinahintulot ni Pastor, hindi nyo dapat ipaggalat sa iba yung, na nagkaroon kayo ng pagkikita. It's about even you don't say to your family. Mas maganda po kung hindi nyo rin po sasabihin yung bagay nito, maski sa inyong pamilya. Because, because you know, it's not sure whether uh, it is a successful after meeting. Until you come to the marriage. Sabagat hindi po sigurado kung ito ay magiging maayos hanggang sa ito ay humantong sa kasalan. But if you already let the people know, if the uh, yeah the marriage uh, you you don't come to the real marriage, it will make many problem to the other brethren. Ngunit kung sasabihin niyo po ito sa iba at hindi kayo ikinasal, maaaring maging problema po ito sa ibang kapatiran. So until the marriage is determined completely, you shouldn't uh, say to anybody. Kaya hanggang sa maipa siya ng lubusan, yung pag-aasawa, dun, wag niyo pong sasabihin ito sa iba. Don't, don't post on the Facebook. Right? Wag niyo rin pong i-post sa Facebook. Okay? Uh, Yeah, if, and then if you all, uh, all uh, two, all of them have the same mind to get married, uh, yeah, it's better uh, try to get married as soon as possible. Kaya kung pareho sila na mayroong kaisipan na mag-asawa na, 
Kaya dapat sila maikasot sa lalong madaling panahon. If the meeting is too long, Satan can also work. Sapagkat kung ito po ay tatagal, maaaring kumilos po si Satanas. If, you, uh, if both sides already determined to get married, it's better uh, to get married as soon as possible. Kaya kung yung magkami ng panik ay nagpa siya ng magpakasal, dapat silang maikasal sa lalong madaling panahon. Uh, but maybe you can meet the situation. Uh, even though you have a several meeting, uh, you don't have a mind to get married. Pero maaaring magkaroon po kayo ng sitwasyon na kung saan, ilang beses na kayo nakita, pero wala pa rin sa isip mo na pakasalan siya. Maybe uh, you, you can find, you find, you can find uh, some disappointment. Maaaring nakita mo sa kanya yung ilang pagka-dismaya. You expect this, this pain, but actually different to pain. Right? Ang inaasamang pananampalataya sa kanya ay ganun, pero yung... Uh, yung totoo talaga ay iba. Or the vision or the view of life is a different. O kaya naman yung kanyang vision o yung pananaw niya sa buhay ay iba. Well, maybe you can be disappointed you don't have a mind to get married. Kaya maaari kang madismaya at ayaw mo na siyang pakasalan. Uh, in that case, uh, you can turn to the pastor. Kapag ganun po yung kaso, maaari mo po yung sabihin sa pastor. But don't say to directly to the other. Huwag mo pong sabihin sa kanya ng direkta. I don't... Like you, I don't want to meet you. Hindi kita gusto, ayaw na kitang makita. If so, yeah, the other side will be hard. Kaya kung ganun po, masasaktan yung kabilang panig. But you can tell to the pastor. Ngunit, maaari mo po yung sabihin sa pastor. Yeah, pastor, I, I don't want to get married with the, the other because of this kind of reason. Maaari mo sabihin kay pastor na ayaw kong maigasal sa kanya dahil sa kadahilanan ito. Yeah, then the pastor can say to the other, Instead of you. At si pastor yung magsasabi doon sa kapila sa halip na ikaw. Maybe pastor will say uh, not to be her. Maaring si pastor na yung bahalang magsabi para hindi siya masaktan. And the other side will accept. At tatanggapin nyo ng kabilang panig. It's not the will of God. Ah, siguro nga hindi ito yung kadaoban ng Diyos. The other side will wait another chance. At yung kabilang panig, maghihintay siya ng panibagong And pagkakataon. And this time, even though they meet in the church, no problem. Kaya kapag ganun po yung kaso, kahit magkita sila sa church, wala ang problema. But, yeah, if uh, hmm, say directly, they don't want to meet in the church, okay? Right? Ngunit kung sinabi mo ng direct, ay, ayaw na talaga makita niya sa church. That's why uh, we need to meet hmm, by, uh, through the pastor. pastor. Kaya kailangan natin magkita sa so pamagita ng pastor. And nobody will be uh, stumber. At walang sino man yung matitisod. Okay? Uh, but yeah, we also have the mind. We also have the mind. Uh, if uh, church or uh, church arrange the marriage, uh, I, I will try to obey. Ngunit dapat magkaroon din po tayo ng ganitong uri ng kaisipan. Kung yung iglesia yung mag-aayos ng ating pag-aasawa, kailangan lang nating sumunod. Because the pastor uh, If a pastor arranges the marriage, then the eyes of the pastor uh, will be better than my eyes. Sabagat kung yung pastor yung mag-aayos ng marriage, ibig sabihin po nun, yung uh, paningin ni pastor ay mas mabuti kaysa paningin ko. It, it, it is the uh, arrangement by God. Ibig sabihin, yun yung arrangement mula sa Diyos. So, uh, there are one example in the Bible. Meron pong isang halimbawa dito sa Biblia. Uh, Rebecca, Rebecca, uh, she could get married with Isaac, right? Kaya si Rebecca po, siya ay napangasawa ni Isaac. Uh, she never met Isaac before. Hindi niya po po nakita si Isaac dati. But by faith, she obeyed. Ngunit sa pamagitan ng pananampalataya, siya ay sumunod. Uh, Genesis chapter 24. Sa so Genesis po, chapter 24. Genesis chapter 24 Genesis po kapitulo 24 24 verse 58 Genesis po chapter 24 verse 58 58 Okay, basahin po natin nang sabay-sabay. At kanila nang tinawag si Rebecca at kanila sinabi sa kanya, "Sasama ka ba sa lalaking ito?" At sinabi niya, "Sasama ako." Will you go with this man? She said, I will go. I will go. Sasama ka ba sa lalaking ito? Sinabi niya, sasama ako. 
She had uh, the faith. Meron siya pananang palataya. She just uh, uh, tried to look at Isaac. Uh, he he was uh, the man of man of the faith. Sa pagkat sinubukan niya pong tignan si Isaac na siya ay isang tao ng pananampalataya. That's why I will go, I will get married with him. Kaya na ako'y hahayo at magiging asawa niya. She, she didn't look at anything, right? Hindi niya po tinignan yung anuman. Just that she believed that Isaac was the man of God. Sa pagkat siya ay sumampalataya na si Isaac ay tao ng Diyos. That's why she could be a real blessed woman Kaya, by becoming the wife of Isaac. Kaya nga po siya ay naging tunay na pinagpalang babae sa pagkita ng pagiging asawa ni Isaac. Uh, it, it really happened in our church. Ito po, tal- ito po talaga ay nangyari sa ating iglesia. The one sister in Korea can marry with the one brother in uh, Ecuador. Meron pong isang sister na nasa Korea ang napang, uh, napangasawa ng isang brother sa Ecuador. The, the brother was, was the Uh, translator in Ecuador uh, by supporting the missionary. Kaya yung brother ay isang translator po doon sa Ecuador bilang pagsuporta sa mga missionary. But the sister was in Korea. Pero yung sister niya nasa Korea po. Yeah. They never met. Kailan man na hindi sila nagkita. But she yeah, decided to get married with the brother in Ecuador. Ngunit siya ay nagdesisyon na pakasalan yung brother na nasa Ecuador. Because she has the vision for the foreign mission. Sa pagkat meron siyang vision para sa foreign mission. That's why uh, they could get married. Kaya na naging meeting. Kaya na kaya na sila naging mag-asawa nang hindi sila yeah. nagkita. It was a possible. Yeah, because they have the faith for the marriage. Kaya naging posible po yun sa pagkat sila meron pa na palataya sa pag-asawa. They thought it is a joining by that. Inisip nila na sila pinagsama ng Diyos. The, Okay. Ang kailangan nilang gawin ay sumunod. Uh, of course, it's a very special case, but uh, when we can uh, can marry, yeah, we need to have uh, this kind of faith. Kaya maaaring special po yung mga ganong uri ng kaso, pero kapag ikakasal po tayo, kailangan natin ng pananampalataya. But it doesn't mean we have to get married compulsory. Pero hindi dapat, hindi po ibig sabihin nito na kailangan natin mag-asawa ng sapilitan. We, 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 we can get married with our love. Mari tayo mag-asawa ng may pag-ibig. We cannot get married with our love. Right? Hindi tayo pwedeng mag-asawa ng walang pag-ibig. But if you are away to God, God will give the mind, you can love the other. Ngunit kung susunod ka sa Diyos, yung Diyos yung magbibigay sa iyo ng pag-ibig na ibigin nyo kapar- yung kabila. It's like this. Yeah, at first... Uh, when you are uh, arranged for the marriage, you can have the meeting, some brethren. Halimbawa po ganito, ina, uh, ini-arrange po kayo sa, uh, sa pag-aasawa at kayo po ay nakikipagkita sa isang kapatid. Uh, the first meeting, you, you are a little bit disappointed. Kaya nung unang pagkikita ninyo, medyo uh, dismayado ka. I don't, I don't like. Ayoko talaga to. But, You meet again several times. Pero ilang beses po kayong nakita mo? And you have the mind to obey the will of God. Pero nagkaroon ka ng kaisipan na sundin yung kalooban And ng Diyos. God will change your eye. At yung Diyos yung magbabago ng iyo, mga mata. Then next time, you have a good feeling. At sa susunod, meron ka na maayos sa pakiramdam. And finally, yeah, you, you, you will have a great love for the other. At sa kaulian, ikaw ay magkakaroon ng napakalaking pag-ibig you sa iba. Come to manage. At kayo ay hahantong sa pag-aasawa. We'll be real blessed to manage. At yun po talaga yung tunay na pinagpalang pag-aasawa. Okay? Yeah. Anyway, keep in mind, God joined together. Kaya, gayon pa man, kailangan natin tandaan And na ang Diyos ang nagsasama. You can follow, you can obey to the will of God. Kaya maaari tayong sumunod sa kalooban ng Diyos. Uh, okay, if for you... Uh, already, if you uh, both sides already determined to get married, then you can proceed uh, the marriage. Kaya kung yung magkabilang panic ay nagpasyon na na mag-asawa, kailangan yung uh, pag-desisyon na. Uh, then, uh, you need to get the permission approval from your parents. Kaya kung ganun po, kailangan yung humingi ng uh, permiso o pagsang-ayon sa inyong magulang. Maybe, uh, first, need to visit 
the parents, each parents. Maring kayong dalawa kailangan yung bisitahin yung uh, mga magulang. Then you need to receive the permission, at approval. Kina kailangan yung humingi ng permiso o pagsangayon. Then uh, you can proceed the, the wedding, wedding. At pagkatapos don, maring na kayo magpatuloy sa kasalan. And also you can determine the date for the wedding and you can also announce to the other brethren. At maririn kayo magpasya ng araw na o pecha ng inyong kasalan at maririn po itong i-anunsyo sa mga kapatiran. So until uh, determine the date for the wedding, uh, as I said, uh, you shouldn't uh, let the other brethren. Kaya hanggang sa ma maihanda yeah, yung pinagpasyang uh, pecha, doon nyo lang po uh, ipapaalam sa mga kapatiran. Yeah. And uh, you, you can prepare um, the wedding. At pagkatapos po nun, paghahanda na para sa kasalan. But uh, because of preparing the wedding, you shouldn't uh, neglect your Christian life. Pero do, uh, sa paghahanda po ng kasalan, dapat hindi nyo pa rin pinapabayaan yung inyong buhay kristyano. So you have to be more diligent in the world of God, in the fellowship, and the ministry in the church. Kinakailangan mo pa rin mag maging masigasig o masipag sa, sa salita ng Diyos, sa fellowship, at sa gawain o sa ministeryo. Yeah. And also, uh, don't act Don't act like a husband and wife inside the church before the wedding. At wag ko kayo kumasta na parang kayo ay mag-asawa na sa loob ng church bago kayo ikasal. You need to still keep the position as a brother and sister in church. So pagkat kailangan nyo pong panatilihin yung inyong position bilang isang brother, bilang isang sister sa church. And it will be a good example to other brethren. At ito po isang magiging magandang halimbawa sa mga kapatiran. And uh, let's think about uh, when you meet the other side. Uh, what uh, we need to consider each other. Kaya kailangan din po natin pag-isipan na kapag uh, nakipagtagpo ka po doon sa kabilang panik, ano yung kailangan mong isaalang-alang? Uh, uh, don't look at, don't look at physical condition. Wag mo pong tingnan yung physical na condition. But focus on the faith, the faith and their characteristics. At magtuon ka sa pananampalataya at sa kanilang katangian. But usually the young, young people focus on outside, outside. Pero kad kadalasan po yung mga kabataan nakatuon lang sa panlabas. Well, the physical condition, right? At doon sa, o kaya naman, doon sa physical na condition. But the more important thing, what faith happened? Ngunit ang mahalagang bagay po dito, anong, pan, anong uri ng pananampalataya so, meron siya? Important, what character have? O kaya naman, anong katangian meron siya? Uh, of course, it, it, uh, it's better, right? Uh, uh, good, good person, not wicked person, right? Siyempre po, maganda yun na uh, kung mabuting tao, hindi masamang tao, di ba? But it's better kind of person, right? Mas maganda kung mabait na tao. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, you have to keep in mind, yeah. there is a no one uh, who is uh, perfect. Pero kailangan nyo pong tandaan na walang sino man ang, per walang sino man ang perfecto. Uh, at first, we need to reflect ourselves. Una, kailangan mo muna na, kailangan muna natin tingnan yung ating sarili. You're not perfect, right? Hindi po tayo perfecto, di ba? Uh, Inspiration. So you're in po ay kula. But uh, that's why we we shouldn't expect the other side uh, is a perfect. Kaya dapat hindi natin asahan na yung kabilang panig ay magiging perfecto. It's usually the woman woman no? wait for the prince prince who ride on the white horse like a Cinderella. Right. Kadalasan po, yung mga babae talagang hinihintay nila yung prinsipe na nakasakay daw sa kabayo gaya ni Cinderella. There is no prince in the world, right? Sa mundo po, wala pong prinsipe. <clears throat> If you try to find the prince who ride on the white horse, you are not ready to get married. Kaya kung aantayin niyo po yung prinsipe na nakasakay sa puting kabayo, ay hindi po talaga kayo maikakasal. So, uh, we will lower our standard, our sight. Kaya dapat nating ibaba yung ating pamantayan, yung ating uh, sarili. 
we try to put our hope not in this world but to our Lord. Kailangan natin ilaga, ilaga yung ating pag-asa hindi sa mundong ito kundi sa ating Panginoon. Then uh, yeah. even though the other side is not perfect, not enough, uh, you can accept, you can understand. Kaya kahit yung kabilang panig ay hindi perfecto at hindi sapat, maunawaan mo siya, maiintindihan mo siya. Or not enough, but through the marriage, we can help each other. Sapagat lahat po tayo ay hindi sapat, ngunit sa pamagitan ng pag-aasawa, matutulungan po natin yung isa't isa. Try to find the uh, good point over the other side. Kailangan mo pong uh, subukan na hanapin yung good point nung kabilang panig. Don't try to find the uh, better point to the other side. Huwag mo siyang subukang hanapan ng masamang point yung kabilang panig po. Yeah. But anyway, the most important thing, what faith uh, they have. Pero ang mahalagang bagay po dito, anong uri ng pananampalataya meron siya? If faith is sure, everything the other side will be no problem. Sapagkat kung sigurado yung pananampalataya, lahat ng bagay ay hindi magiging problema. So, when you have a meeting by, arranged by the pastor, try to check, look at what faith have. Kaya kapag kayo po ay nagkaroon ng pagkikita, arrangement sa pamagitan ng pastor, kailangan nyo suriin, tingnan kung anong uri ng pananampalataya meron siya. If so, God will lead Real blessed marriage. Kaya yung Diyos yung magdadala sa atin sa tunay na pinagpalang pag-aasawa. Uh, so, yeah, of course, the marriage, marriage in the church is not easy problem. Siyempre po, yung pag-aasawa sa iglesia, hindi po ito madaling problema. So, please uh, endure to self-control uh, this time. Kaya kinakailangan niyo pong magtiis at kinakailangan niyo pong isagawa yung uh, pagpipigil sa sarili sa panahong ito. Just try to uh, try to be more prepared before the Lord. At kailangan niyo pong subukan na mas higit na maging handa sa harapan ng Panginoon. If so, yeah. our Lord will join your partner. At yung Panginoon, siya yung magdadala ng iyong partner. So I really hope all our brethren can get married in church. Kaya lubos akong umaasa na ang lahat ng ating mga kapatiran ay maikakasal sa iglesia. It's a real blessing. Ito po yung tunay na pagpapala. And you will become the real pillar, pillar of the church. At kayo po ay magiging tunay na haligi ng iglesia. Okay. <laughs> Let's pray together. Tayo pong lahat ay manalangin. Dear much friend, Gracious Father, malat mapagpala namin kama. Thank you for saving us from sin and eternal destruction. Parang isalamat po na nilitas mo kami mula sa kasalanan at mula sa walang hanggang pagkawasa. Today we thought about the marriage of the Christian. Kaya sa araw na ito pinag-isipan po namin yung pag-aasawa ng Kristiano. God please lead all our brothers and sisters to get married in the Lord. Kaya pakiusap Panginoon, kayo po yung umakay sa lahat ng mga brothers and sisters upang sila ay makapag-asawa sa Panginoon. Please lead them to make a real sincere family in the church. Kaya kayo po nawa yung mamula sa kanila upang sila ay magkaroon ng tunay at tapat na sinserong pamilya sa iglesia. At this time, we are still have a great difficulty and oppression because of our situation by COVID-19. Ngunit sa panahon ito, kami po ay lubos na nahihirapan at nabibigitan dahil sa aming sitwasyon sa COVID-19. Let us endure and overcome this oppression by relying on the Lord. Kaya tulungan niyo po kami na magtiis at uh, mapagtagumpayan yung kapigadyan ito sa pamagitan ng pag-asa namin sa Panginoon. Let us glorify our Lord even you are in oppression. At tulungan niyo po kami na luwalatiin ang aming Panginoon kahit na kami ay nasa kapigadyan. We only rely on your mercy and gracious. Kami po ay umaasa lamang sa inyong habag at biyaya. We pray in Jesus' name. Dalangin namin ito sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay, salamat po.